Hello and welcome to this special presentation on Times Now. The budget this year is going to be extremely important. It doesn't matter where you are in the country or where you are at life. This budget perhaps might just define the next couple of years of your life. Now, we are in Bennett University in the National Capital Region. And with me right now is Professor Nilanjan Banik, who is a professor of economics and the young, bright students of Bennett University. Give yourselves a huge round of applause. And thank you for participating here. Now, the purpose of this program is to find out what young India wants from this budget. How does young India perceive the budget 2020, what they want in it, what they feel should be in it, and what they seem to think about the challenges facing Nirmala Sitaraman, our finance minister. Before I go to the students, however, I would like to start the show with Professor Banik, if I could. Professor Banik, this particular budget has assumed significance in ways more than one. Uh, particularly because our economy is in a downslide. It's not really good news on the economic front. The government's trying really hard, but they have an uphill onerous task. To you, what is an ideal budget? I wouldn't say good or bad, because depending on who you speak to, it could be different yardsticks. But what is an ideal budget going into 2020s? See, uh, in a way, uh, budget is no different than how we manage our family. I'll just give you an instance. Like, we have our own income, and we prioritize our spending based on the requirement. The similar thing is we are going to see about the budget. The government has fixed pot of money and something they actually earn from taxes. And they have to prioritize their spending on various activities, for instance, health, education, uh, or for rural sector. Now, I'll tell you why this budget is important for some, some reason. And these are the known facts. For the first time in the last four decades, we have had scenario where the consumption expenditure is falling. Now, what does that mean? If you look into our society, one of the perception is inequality is growing. Now, we have close to 500 million farmers in India. Now, out of these 500 million farmers, almost 85% of the farmers belongs to the small and medium categories with less than two hectares of land holdings. Hmm. Now, one of the reasons uh, what has been talked about in the press is maybe because of demonetization, this farming sector and the small and medium uh, scale industry got hurt. And because of that, what we are seeing has happened over the last four decades, which is a fall in consumption expenditure. So therefore, the first thing I should expect from the finance minister hmm. is, is there any way we can actually boost up this consumption expenditure? Because without that, again, you might have heard that the latest growth figure for our GDP is around 5%. You know? That is 4.5. 4.5 uh, yeah, yeah, is the yeah. uh, least in uh, the hmm. last 11 years. You hmm. know? And consumption expenditure being the largest component of GDP, it explained close to around 60% of the GDP. My idea is we should find a way how to increase the consumption expenditure. You know, it's interesting you mentioned consumption here because we understand, and any economist you speak to, and I speak to a, a lot of them, uh, suggest that uh, the, the reason uh, why the government hasn't really been able to tackle uh, the problems on their plate right now is because they want to drive growth, but they're not looking really at the, uh, at the reason why, which is lack of demand lack of private investment in private sector as well. Do you think the government has done enough? Uh, we are uh, having apparel industry, which is also happened to be one of our largest exporting sector. Now, if you look into the size of the apparel industry in India, it's close to 120 US billion dollars, yes. which is almost same to the size of the reliance industry. Hmm. Now, this apparel industry employs 40 million of workers, right? Now, the problem with, I was uh, looking at one of the news items, which says that the problem with the apparel industry is they are not getting their GST input, uh, which they have uh, filed, you know, from the Problematic government. Problematic GST. Yes, implemented. yes. And because of that, what happens is we are not getting competitive in the world market. Mm. And our apparel export shares is being eaten up by uh, uh, countries like Bangladesh, Vietnam, and so on and so forth. Bangladesh is a success story. It, it is a success story. Around, yeah. and, and that is a problem, because my, my idea is, if you look into this GST, had government was in a position to give back this input credit on GST, uh, we could have been uh, price competitive by as much as 7%, which is a big thing. You know? But unfortunately, I don't know, the government may not have that money, because the economy is not doing, and corporate tax is a source of earning for the government. And because the corporate tax is also not getting there, again, uh, we are talking yesterday, you know, for the first time, the imports started falling. Hmm. You know, if yeah. you're looking into the items such as electronic items or steel, hmm. uh, there is a clear indication that the import is falling because our industry is not doing well. 
or maybe because there is an excess capacity in our industry, mm. you know. Mm. So the need of the hour is try to fix this problem, you know. Somehow ensure that there is money in the hand of the rural people, because that is like 500 million of 1.25 billion population. I, I want to about. talk yeah. about, uh, you know, demand-driven answers, really, in just a bit. And I also want to go into the students as well. Right. But before I do that, I also quickly want to touch upon uh, what we look at uh, every year in the budget, which is, of course, uh, whether the government is going to uh, maintain the fiscal deficit targets, uh, what is the CAD looking like uh, as well, and uh, what is the government's uh, revenue target, all that. Do you think uh, this time around... Uh, the government perhaps, uh, I think last year the FISC was, the target was about 3.3 or 3.4, right. and the government did overshoot it. Do you think this time around it's going to be the same? By how, how much is that going to affect really how, as yeah. we go forward? I wish they overshoot it for mm. the simple reason, you need to put some more money mm. uh, for schemes such as Narega, mm. you know, because this is the bulk of where the rural people are working, and you need to give money in the hand of the rural people. Mm. You need to put more money in the PM Kisan, although they have, uh, now I think 75,000 crore they have allocated, but half of the money they could not disburse mm. because the, the, the other card of the farmers are not linked to their bank account, you know. Mm. And the, I, I also gave you that instance of the small and medium enterprises, they're not getting input credit mm. tax. Mm. You know, so what this tells you, if a industry is dying, at the end of the day, I'm not going to hire the people. Mm. And again, the latest data show that there are around uh, 25 million people without job out of, again, 500 million or la labor force, you know. Which gives me the perfect segue because we have young students here and uh, right. after all, we want to talk about job creation. Uh, we also want to talk about uh, uh, the bane of our times, which is, of course, jobless growth in India. Uh, I want you to uh, raise your hands uh, uh, if you want to speak about jobs, jobless growth, uh, or uh, any other such topics, unless you have a specific topic in mind, and I'll come to you. Who wants to speak on which topic right now? I'll come to you first. Uh, my friend, what is your name and what do you want to speak about? I'm Avmanyu Banerjee. Yes. I'm an engineering student. <coughs> um, I wish to pursue research and higher studies ahead, but I feel there's a lack of support financially and otherwise. I wish and I want the government to provide us support and resources to go ahead and pursue this research and higher studies. Uh, I want to do an MBA from mm. an IM, but I'll have to spend 15 lakhs in just two years. Mm. And I would be grateful and glad if the government provides some kind of soft loan or an education loan, mm. which actually helps me and supports me. Who else wants to speak on, on a topic of their choice? My friend, what's your name and what do you want to speak about? My name is Parikshit. Mm. I would like to speak uh, about the concerns in the finished product businesses. So they are able to assemble these finished products at a very competitive rate compared to China. They're even doing it at a lower rate. Mm. But due to the high taxation on inputs, whether they get it from abroad or from India, and the very high minimum wage rates, they're not able to sustain their competitive advantage, mm. which results in people not even getting these minimum wage rate jobs. So they just go unemployed. And this does not allow the businesses to be competitive both within India and abroad. Hmm. I think that's a fair point. I think we should applaud that point because such clarity is very rare. A round of applause for my friend over here. Uh, well put. Uh, very well put, very coherent, and I think uh, uh, Professor Barnick would agree that my uh, young friend over here hit the nail right on the head as yeah. far as uh, MSMEs are concerned and their wage problems are concerned. Would you agree with them? And uh, w what can the government really do to address uh, my young friend's say, point? Say, uh, two little parts. Yes. One about the education that he was speaking about. Yes. In fact, I was discussing with them. You know, in the UK, you, you are having a degree from there. Well, yeah. Uh, long now, long. now, what you see over there, now they have started a program hmm. where people pursuing mm. master's and PhD degree in artificial intelligence and robotics. Right. The government is paying for the entire free. Mm. You know? So we also need to, the government need to handhold uh, and facilitate this tie-up between universities particularly the private... Uh, just on that point, how would you uh, react? Because I've uh, made the same point to uh, policymakers as well in the past, and they say we've done enough hand-holding. We've done enough. Do you think the government has done enough hand-holding as far Alex, as... I don't things? see that hmm? happening, hmm? except for the fact now they are saying that few institutes will be uh, the place of eminence. You know? hmm. Apart from that, when it comes to the number of patents being filed, the number of research papers being published... I don't see the outcome there as yet. So. Uh, that's a fair point. I also want to discuss taxes because I know these are primarily students, uh, but very soon they'll have to deal with taxes. I think somebody wants to speak on tax, direct or indirect, yes. The government is going to revamp its direct tax structure in order to boost consumption expenditure. 
also over the years there have been like lot of reforms have been introduced in order to widen the tax base but we see the dichotomy in the numbers is still prevalent why do you think that is because 7% of the indians actually file their taxes which roughly translate to about 6.2 crores of the indians i think the figure is much lower than 7 my friend out it's of about, which it's about 6% out of yeah. which only 2.04 actually end up paying Absolutely taxes correct. which is like barely 1% of the population correct. this is a very well informed audience by the way another round of applause for anand because he knows his facts um um not to interrupt you but i had to do that go ahead right so i think the need of the r is to in how to incentivize tax payments and uh, the government can do this by in the past a lot of uh, reforms such as like certificates of appreciations were handed out to people who effectively contributed to their taxes like certificates like gold silver and bronze were handed out so the government should leverage these uh, certificates for example i think the number of people who will be willing to pay their taxes will starkly increase if for example you could hold a <coughs> wedding at raj bhavan through your gold certificate or you will get That's access to international idea. airports I'm lounges not, through your i'm not your sure if nirmala sitaraman actually would go for it but i also want to ask you before i go back to professor banik and the others here as well uh, what about uh, the fact i'm sure you read papers and and there's a lot of said in the media about quote unquote tax terrorism do you think a far more benevolent or a lenient sort of tax uh, uh, approach could actually mean that more people start paying taxes uh, you you get your revenues and you meet your targets do you think that's the right approach or do you think uh, a stricter approach always works well uh, exactly that's what, exactly what the point that i was trying to make that even though like majority of the people that are contributing to the coffers of the government are the high net individuals right and these are the people who are very very uh hesitant in contributing or paying their taxes so if you actually incentivize the whole tax mm. payment system i think the amount of people just generally would go up uh, sp- staying on tax right now how many of you think by show of hands that there could be some tweaking of tax slabs in this budget your personal opinion hands up who think there might be some tweaking let's count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so the majority of people think there might be something up uh, on the tax tweaking front we of course will not second guess the finance minister who else wants to speak Uh, on their chosen uh, subject i believe there are other people here uh, on that yes i'll come to you very quickly uh, what is your name young lady and what do you want to speak on uh, hi i'm priyul uh, i'm from bba third year uh, i myself want to set up a business but uh, i see that setting up a business in india is very much difficult than setting up a business in other countries because in india it includes so much of red tapeism lots of paperwork and legal frameworks mm. uh, but uh, looking at the past data uh, there is a removal of 25% of angel tax which is the welcome move of the government and also if we see uh, th- there has been uh, m- more investments in uh, startups rather than in uh, do you think the government has done enough for startups because they did as you mentioned uh, uh, remove the angel tax i think the last year's budget or i think the year before but do you think that's enough we spoke no. about hand holding startups no it's more just more. it's not enough it's just the first move it, uh, first move they need to take more initiatives uh, and i would like to suggest i would like the government to suggest more such initiatives all for right. the startups all right priya thank you uh, we'll go back to professor banik and i'll come try and come back of course to the audience as and when we can professor banik a uh, very well informed group of young students uh, you have here So do you think it's a piecemeal approach rather than a let's say a Yes, I think it's a learning by doing kind of mm-hmm. thing what mm-hmm. the government mm-hmm. is doing but my uh, and and there has been also it, it is coming out in the paper that uh, people are actually taking benefit out of it you know uh, just filing some uh, forged document mm-hmm. as invoice input mm-hmm. invoice you know so government is actually losing out on two f- front because if you are making something which is very complicated a i don't participate and b there are also chances that i not only participate but i also make sure that you i get for, some benefit you yeah. look for loopholes loop yeah. the great indian jugad yeah, trick you call it and <laughs> we are you are good, good at jugad we are very good at jugad yeah. yeah so my only suggestion would be i hope to see maybe in this budget there are some talk as to how to simplify this process you know despite of the fact government trying hard to uh, minimize the risk because less than 35% of a land is irrigated you know and there is high volatility in the agricultural sector output as well in spite of this 
less than 25% of the farmers knew that there is there, a product created. There are product so, so you're saying the outreach has, uh, let's say, for want of a better word, really failed. The outreach for not just the policies and the programs, but also it hasn't really permeated uh, into the demographic that India really wants it to permeate. Yeah, means you have to go and reach out to the farmers mm -hmm. saying that, look, boss, these are the kind of products which are available, you know. And uh, forget about the derivatives or the e-market. Mm -hmm. Most of them don't know how to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Recently, I was talking to my student. You see that uh, every year, particularly during the election year, you see that the onion price shoot up in the sky. But can government does enough of incentive to set up e-market so that the farmers in Maharashtra can sell directly to their uh, potential target? Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Now, just to give you some numbers, there are around uh, 6,600 market, agricultural market, which come under APMC Act, mm -hmm. which means as a farmer, I can go and sell my produce. Out of that, in whole of India, there are around 600 e-market. Hmm. So you can understand that how small are the e-market. And even in e-market, there are problems. You know, Let's say that within basmati rice, there can be 100 varieties of basmati rice. Hmm. Someone will uh, be selling for 100 rupees per kilo. Some basmati rice, you will also get it for 50 rupees per kilo. Hmm. Now, if I were to, let's say, do trade through e-market, I just post some pictures. You know? hmm. But there is no mechanism. For instance, you showing me some pictures and you are actually selling something else to me, the hmm. same basmati rice. Hmm. But there is no mechanism to address this dispute. Uh, Professor Banik, I want your opinion uh, and your views and thoughts on what uh, many captains of India, Indian industry, India Inc. as we call them, have come out and said. I think Rajiv Bajaj was the latest uh, right. to echo this view, that the budget has never really been the problem or the vehicle to address India's systemic economic problems. Right. How much do you agree with that and why? If I you do. Yeah, I totally agree with that hmm. because budget is a single day event hmm. where the idea is you kind of allocate resources to various activities, be it infrastructure, be it uh, building more hospitals, roads, schools, uh, things like that. But reform is a continuous process, you know, True. like uh, when last time uh, FM uh, Nirmala Sethiraman reduced the corporate tax. It was mm. not on the day of the budget, mm. I remember. Mm. Uh, even when she was speaking, like angel tax was removed, uh, it was not on the day of the budget. So the reform is basically changing the existing rules and laws so as to make it more business friendly. So I totally agree with Mr. Bajaj when he says mm. that uh, the reform will continue to go. And uh, my hunch is, given what has happened so far, and this is the first year, that the government is on uh, trying to do something more proactively, mm. it will be a bold budget in that way. Uh, where well, they it's about will, time. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's about it's time. About otherwise, time. <laughs> otherwise, we've lost the opportunity. That $5 trillion economy or Absolutely. things like we're t talking uh, uh, in. I mean, we talk about big bang reforms, yes. and we've seen the past three budgets, not, nothing big bang about them, clearly. There's some incremental sort of uh, right. uh, piecemeal kind of approach, of course, not to be too critical of the government, mm. but uh, perhaps this is the time. It's now or never. I have a young friend here. What's your name and uh, what is your view on uh, rising petrol, diesel and, and petrol prices overall? Uh, so my name is Kanika Mittal mm. and uh, we generally travel a lot, right? So when I see petrol prices is touching heights, petrol and diesel prices, the, the taxes you're paying for t petrol and diesel prices are nearly double the re retail prices. Mm. Uh, in Delhi itself, we see that the petrol prices are 80.87, which is... Uh, out of which half of it is taxes. Yes. So I request, you know, I just want to ask government that can they make changes in their taxes? Can they reduce the ta taxes mm. that will, however, at the end affect, impact us? Uh, my name is Zeel. I'm first year engineering student. And I want to speak about clean energy. I want the government to give more importance to clean energy since petrol prices are soaring high. India needs to invest on something which is sustainable, which is good for environment. Many of the developed countries already have considerable number of electrical vehicles on road in which India is lagging behind. I think there have been reforms about this, there have been funds that are researching on this, but there, is, there isn't a welcoming nature for companies mm. which are electrically in nature for India. There have been some talks with Tesla, but that's going, that's not, there is no breakthrough yet. India is lagging behind because, see, there have been exemptions in uh, Western countries for the electrical vehicles. There have been less exemptions 
exemptions for companies that wants to open their business in India. And also, there haven't been electrical charging stations, mm. just like petrol pumps. There needs to be electrical charging stations. So you're saying infrastructural problems. Yeah, infrastructure problems. There needs to be some subsidies, some incentives for people who need to open electrical charging stations, just as Il Ministry of Agriculture is doing for farmers who want to grow cash crops. They are giving incentives to them. I think government needs to give this to electrical charging station owners too, hmm. so that they open that and then we welcome more of the companies. So you would like to yeah. see more on clean energy and of course addressing climate change in this particular budget? Yeah, in this particular budget because there haven't been much from the past years. Oh, fair enough. Zeel makes a very good point. I think we deserve a round of applause because climate change is upon us. You only, you only have to see what's happening in Australia and you'll get a reality check really about how serious a problem climate change is. My friend, what's your name and what do you want to speak on? I'm Anj Pate and I would like to talk about the job and the education system sure. we are facing. Yes. In India, there are like 500 million working force mm. and out of which I guess 25 million are unemployed. Mm. And as we talk, only 2% of people are, those who are applying for the jobs are getting actual jobs. So this is because of the, uh, the advancement in the technology that we are facing in this era. Mm. So I think Indian education system doesn't provide that particular skill set which mm. is required by today's companies to get those jobs. What I want is, uh, since this country also has around 55 million people who are under the poverty line, and in case they are sick or they have a, uh, a disease, so they have to pay hefty amounts in order to get any sort of uh, medical facilities for mm. them. So you want increased focus on healthcare, primary, secondary and tertiary? Yeah, All primary, right. especially... Uh, you know, insurances to be provided to the people under the poverty line and incentives for premiums for them. All right. Try and quickly wrap it up by asking Professor Barnik to wrap this up for us. Wish list Professor Barnik as far as this budget is concerned. You have to prioritize. Yes. Now, in terms of priority, the first thing which comes to my mind, the government should fi find out a way how to increase the consumption expenditure yes. because that is the most important and the critical That's priority thing. number one for you. That priority number okay. one for me. Hmm. Second is uh, how to ensure that there is no market imperfection in terms of whether uh, make the tax much more simplifier hmm. so that the SME can file those taxes or for that matter how to uh, reduce the logistic cost or for that matter what my friend was saying that uh, if I want to open up a business, mm. do I find an easier way to open up a business? Mm. Uh, mind you that right now we have 25 million people without any employment opportunity, you mm. know. Mm. Uh, so the need of the hour is uh, why not uh, give more emphasis to, let's say, gig economy, you mm. know. Mm. You have like uh, Uber, Ola of the world, uh, which are actually growing quite fast, you know. Now, in fact, 56% of the new jobs which are getting created are coming from the gig side. You mm -hmm. know? So why don't uh, the government, if they are running short of funds, uh, try to uh, somehow uh, work with these private companies, the mm. new age companies, and try to create more employment opportunities. Okay, uh, one last question because I'm completely out of time yeah, on this. Do you sure. believe this is going to be the budget? Hand on your heart uh, as a citizen, as an economist who, who studies the news, who watches the news and watches developments around him. Do you think this is going to be that big bang budget that we've been waiting for for the past, let's say, six years now? Do you think this is the one or do you think we'll be disappointed again? I am hopeful. Let's put it in this way. Okay. All right. On that note, Professor Barnik, I must thank you, first of all, and these wonderful students who've been absolutely magnificent and uh, well-researched and well-read. Give yourselves one more round of applause and a big round of applause to Bennett University as well. Uh, that was our uh, budget special, a pre-budget special, if you will. This is what Young India wants. This is what The Economist, of course, to my left, has given us in terms of research, in terms of facts. I hope you liked the show. My name is Atar Khan. Thanks for watching.